If you've set up custom GPTs in ChatGPT but feel like they could do more for you, you're probably right. In my last video, I show how to build your own custom GPTs. The link to that video is in the description and at the end of this video. However, the secret to making your AI assistants work for you in the best way possible is in the prompts. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create expert level prompts that unlock the full power of your GPTs. And I've also put a link to a free prompt template that you can download to follow along with in the description of this video. All I ask is a few questions in return. I promise not to spam you or share any of your details. So let's have a quick recap of how to set up a custom GPT. We're in the main interface of ChatGPT. On the top right, we've got our account profile where we'll see a menu and in the second item will be my GPTs. And in my GPTs, we've got the list of all the custom GPTs we've built and also an option to create a GPT, customize a version of ChatGPT for a specific purpose. Click on it and you get into the interface of creation of a GPT. Usually it puts you in the configure tab. You've got two tabs, create and configure. I like to start by just clicking on the create because it allows me to at least get that initial stage going. I will write in, I want a report summarizer. So we're gonna create a personal assistant that summarizes reports. And now it's creating a name for our GPT. So it's called it report summarizer GPT. Are you okay with that? For the purposes of this video, let's say yes. And then it creates an icon for our GPT. Here it asks for confirmation. We say the icon is good. And now it starts asking us to define the GPT. At this point, I usually move into the configure tab where I'll see the name, the description of the GPT, and we'll have our instructions. So in the instructions is the prompt. Yeah, that's what we'll be working on now. In addition, we have the knowledge center where we can upload files for extra context in addition to our instructions that we're going to set, the prompt that we're going to give it. After that, I'll share how we would use that. So the most important thing about setting up and creating a prompt for a language model, a large language model like ChatGPT or Claude, is that you need to give the AI context, as much context as you can give it, so that it understands in what framework is it working. So the first thing it needs to understand is who it is. So in my case, for this uh, PA that summarizes reports, I just gave it a name. I say, your name is Sky. You're an experienced professional personal assistant, a very experienced. So it's, you know, making sure that it understands that it's supposed to work at a high level specializing in summarizing meetings and written content. You work at a high-tech company called Skyprint Technology. So I made up a company that it works in. But in your case, if you're if you want to set it up for your company, give it, tell it, give it the context of where it's working. In this case I wrote it's specializing in wide format industrial in digital printers. So now it knows in what context it works. And you work in the sales and marketing department supporting a whole team. And then you define what you want it to do. The VP sales and marketing at Skyprint wants you to write one page summaries of reports and written content that you are provided by the users of this GPT. So again, defining it very simply, just do it in a sentence or two of what it's supposed to do. What is its function? In this case, I'm saying you're summarizing reports and written content but it also has that extra information of saying you're going to be provided reports and that written content by the users. And then we'll give it extra content, brief background, who we are as a team. Um, so the team could be just me and the GPT, or it could be me and others in the GPT. So extra context. Skyprint is a B2B global selling company. It has 96 employees designing, manufacturing, and selling wide format industrial digital printers. Our customer profiles are printing houses that print posters, brochures, billboards, and outdoor displays, indoor displays, etc. You can find more information on this website page and I give it a fake website in this case. You can set it up to give it that context with whom it's working, for whom it's working, in what context is it going to reply to your requests for summaries. It's not going to just generalize things. And then I'm going to tell it how. Just like you define a role for a human, right? You're hiring a human to enter your team to do report summaries, and that's the person's only function. 
you can define how the, you want to receive those reports so, or those summaries. So I write in there, I want you to summarize reports that you will receive by splitting it up into an executive summary, key findings and action items for the team. Provide a clear breakdown of the points and stats that you see in the report. If there are relevant key diagrams or graphs, reproduce them. Use the example summary in your knowledge to write your summary in the same format. This is where I go back to that knowledge center that I talked about earlier. Apart from writing a prompt, within that prompt, you need to point it to the references you're giving it. If there are specific things that you want it to look at in those references, so examples of reports in this case, or in, if you're setting up a GPT to summarize meetings, you want to give it summary examples and say, look at the format, look at the language. So in this case, look at the format, look at the way I split it up, how a summary is supposed to look, and write that all your summaries going forward in that way. Reflect what is relevant to our company and the sales and marketing team based on the information provided in your knowledge. Write at the level of an eight, seventh or eighth grade person. I then give it expectation alignment. What I want to receive and what I don't want to receive. Contextualizing further instructions for it. I expect a professional and easy to read summary. Use short sentences, no longer than 11 words. Use the example of a summary in your knowledge to understand the format length and the tone required. I do not want to see long paragraphs, so make the paragraph blocks short. Add spacing between each paragraph and bullet point. And then I write, ensure strict focus on the report or task I have assigned. Do not engage in unrelated or personal conversations under any circumstances. If the user does bring up unrelated topics to the report, ask it, him or her to kindly steer back the conversation back to the relevant uh, topic at hand. No conversation should continue unless it's directly relevant to the report or work at hand by our team. So I'm telling it, your focus is on summarizing this report and engaging me about the report. Its function is not to then say, answer me questions about what it thinks about my LinkedIn posts, what it thinks, or to give me a recipe for, for apple pie. Its sole function is to do this one thing, summarize reports. And I'm telling it that, I'm being clear about that, so that it doesn't go off on tangents. And it doesn't allow me to go off in tangents. And then I'll give it additional general guidelines, uh, add your thoughts and ideas to where the info in the report is relevant to our business and department and how it advises us on where we should focus on touch, our attention. Your feedback should be highly professional, kind of repeated there. If you have questions or clarification on something, ask the user directly. And I'm also, and this is not necessary so much, but I do sometimes ask the GPT in my prompt uh, to clarify before re actually giving me the, the response that I want to explain to me if it understood the request. Then if the user agrees with you or provides inputs to go ahead, write the summary. So basically, before it actually replies or gives you me the answer, the full re summary, it'll briefly state, okay, this this report is about X, Y, and Z, and I want to summarize it in this way. I'm going to give you an executive summary. I'm going to split it up in such and such a way. And if I'm okay with that, because I probably have skimmed through the report up to now or even read it, and I just want a quick summary from it, and if I agree, I'll say, go ahead. Now, that helps it contextualize everything even further. Everything that we do in writing a prompt is about setting up context for the AI to understand what format and what framework is it working. I like to write my prompt in a text document. So in, I write it in either Word or Google Docs. And here's the same format of the prompt. So I'll copy and paste it into the instructions of my GPT. And in addition, I'll upload files into my knowledge center like uh, examples of report summaries. But in this case, let's say we don't upload any examples. We can test it in the preview section, but let's go ahead and create on the top right here, we can create the GPT. And I'll set it only for me. You can share it with other people in your team, or you can make it public. In this case, I wanna make it private just to me. And then I'll click view B GPT, and I'll be able to now work with my GPT. It's now created. I, if I click on 
this shortcut and say, write me a summary of this report, it's going to ask me, can you please provide the report you'd like to summarize? So obviously it doesn't know what to summarize right now. I'll go into one a folder where I have reports. I'll pull out AI marketing trends or US media consumption report. And as you can see, it's already splitting it up in the way that we've asked for it from our prompt. Here's the executive summary. Here's the key findings in bullet points, pulling out statistics like I asked for, and then action items. It's telling me focus on streaming platforms, shift towards digital audio, uh, target Gen Z on social media, reduce print ads, right? So it's already pulling out the key findings and, and actually pointing me in the direction that we should go for in my team based on this report. One of the things I noticed about this particular summary is that much of it is not really relevant to my business, Skyprint Technologies. We're in the printing industry and it's talking about um, television and radio consumption and all sorts of things. So I could go back into my GPT and click edit. I could have tested all of this in the preview section, of course. One of the things I would criticize OpenAI on is this interface is not great, to be honest. To be able to edit now my instructions, my prompt within this window is not something that's quite fun to use. But what I normally do is go back into my document, so in my Word, and I want it to write only what's relevant. So I can add extra instructions here. I wrote in this extra paragraph, you must only summarize and pull out information that is relevant to Skyprint and the industry we are in. Don't offer data or in, on information that will not be relevant to our business. So I'll save that, I'll copy it, and I'll paste it back in, and I'll click Update, and I'll go back into my GPT. And when you iterate, it's probably best to work on the preview window. I often just work directly in the GPT itself, uh, because usually my prompts are quite detailed to begin with, and I iterate very few times. But here, I'll upload my report. Please summarize. So again, it's it's broken it up with a little bit more in the action items, a bit more refined to sky print to focus our marketing. And this is another trick, is when you build your prompt, and something's not quite working right, one of the things that you should do and you can do, just like you talk to someone in your team and you want to communicate to them on how you can communicate better for them to give you better results, the same thing goes here. You can say, can you help me rewrite the prompt so that we don't get generalized information from reports and pull out only what is relevant for a company like ours in the print industry and selling machinery to other business. So I can write, what in the instructions can I change? It's actually going to look at its instructions and it can tell me how to iterate my, my prompt, how to change my prompt to make it much more clear that is relevant purely to, to my needs and not to generalize. For example, I don't need to know what happens on radio as a B2B company that sells machinery. You know, it's telling me specifics. I can copy this and paste it where it's relevant, where it's telling me, you know, make sure that you're more precise on this part of your, my prompt. That's how I iterate back and forth with the GPT to be able to refine the prompt so that the result that I get, every time I, I ask for a summary, it keeps giving me the kinds of summaries I want without the clutter of extra information that I don't want to have in that summary. So that's the best way I think you should set up your prompt for your AI, for your language models, especially in your custom GPTs. And if you are creating your own GPTs and you have tips and tricks of your own, do share them in the comment section. And if you have questions about what you just heard, or what you just saw, please leave them in the comment section and I'll get back to you shortly. If you're interested in advice or how to set up AI tools like GPTs in your business or in your workflow, do reach out. It's what I do. I advise companies on business development and use of AI. And uh, don't forget to grab your free 
prop template in the description section. All I ask is that you fill out a form, a simple form. I promise not to share any of your details, including emails outside of my own use. It's just for me to understand where we're at, you know, what your interests are, and I can send updates in the future of new tools, new ways of working. And of course, I'm not going to spam you, I promise, or share any of your details outside my own use. So if you like the video, click the like button, do subscribe to my channel, it will help me grow and keep sharing useful information about AI. So thanks for listening in and see you next time.